What's going on, ladies and gents? Live from Las Vegas. So we are running through what is the official final mock draft for me before the draft actually comes on the 28th. So, you know, super excited for that. Super excited for this. Uh, I've been ready for, you know, just a little over a bit, uh, just a little over a week now. Everything else was just last little tidbits of information. Um, so it's been really fun running through it. This was my first year, you know, not just on camera, but, you know, in general running through mock drafts. It's been pretty fun. Um, I would say maybe some, some kind of like baseline things when it comes to, uh, what we'll do here. I'm not looking to do any trades whatsoever. We're going to make use of all nine picks that we have, no trade ups, no trade downs, um, and just kind of play it from that standpoint. Uh, and then everything else will just be all the information that I pulled together. So as normal, I'll kind of give you guys uh, some insight into the thought process on why I'm selecting them maybe over some other players. Um, and then as always, I'll be interested to kind of hear what your guys' thoughts are. If there would have been a, a prospect that you would have chose preferably at that position. But uh, without further ado, I'm going to say let's just go ahead and dive into it. So we see... Okay, so nothing that's unexpected necessarily, but here's what's the interesting thing is. Aiden Hutchinson to the Jags, Kayvon Thibodeau to the Lions, Malik Willis goes to the Texans. So this might start maybe a little bit of a run and give us a little bit more variety at the 10th spot for us. Okay, so four starters, because I know this is going to be the first thing. I'm not taking a tackle. I have full belief Makai Becton comes back. He does great. If nothing else, we can always develop a, a player that we pick, you know, somewhere later on, third, fourth, fifth round, whatever it is at the tackle spot as insurance. Uh, Joe Douglas has also already mentioned Connor McDermott, uh, Connor McDermott. He's comfortable with having there. I know it's not ideal at all, but... Um, but I think it would be kind of a waste of resources with how the draft plays out here for us to go with a tackle. The other thing would be uh, when it comes to safety. Basically, for me, this is up between edge and a, a playmaking cornerback safety, whatever the case. Uh, there's four safeties, essentially, that I'm going to look to try to target, uh, make the best use of value and, you know, where we have them at. That's Kyle Hamilton. That is Louis Seen. Uh... Lewis seen Kirby Joseph and then Brian Cook. <clears throat> if it's not one of those four players, I, I'm not picking them up unless we just miss out on them for whatever reason. Uh, and the two top safeties for me uh, are going to end up being Lewis seen and Kirby Joseph. And that just purely comes from the standpoint that they played the most amount of free safety snaps and they've had high end production. So I'm not going Kyle Hamilton here either. Um, I do want to go with a player that's not a one-year wonder either. So that means no Trayvon Walker, even though he had the crazy combine. It really leaves me with either reaching for another edge, because I don't think there's another player worthy at the edge spot. Uh, at number four, definitely not a wide receiver. Um, and that basically leaves us with a cornerback. So this is going to be a mod Gardner as the pick for me. We're going to bring a little sauce to New York, or New Jersey anyways, uh, and <clears throat> our cornerback room instantly becomes the best part of our entire team. The deepest roster, the best talent uh, that's stacked there. So a couple other notable picks in between. Evan Neal goes to the Giants. <clears throat> Kyle Hamilton goes to the Panthers, who don't decide to go the quarterback route. Garrett Wilson goes to the Giants. Trayvon Walker goes to the Falcons, and Jordan Davis goes to the Seahawks. So <clears throat> at this point, tackle, again, not on the board for me. I'm not really considering it. This needs to be an edge for me. I don't want to reach on a wide receiver when there's still going to be so many talented players that still have number one potential in round two and maybe even pushed into round three a little bit. Um, so I'm not going to go that route, which means for me personally that that really just leaves <clears throat> with... Kyle Hamilton being off the board, I would have considered him at 10. This really leaves an edge. And for me, the player that offers the best combination of what I would expect is, you know, great chemistry in the locker room, uh, consistency performance-wise, um, improvement as well, uh, and then just the measurables and everything is going to be George Karloftis. Jermaine Johnson's still on the board, but... 
he's kind of been a flash in the pan. He couldn't make, he couldn't really break out in Georgia. Uh, he goes to Florida State. He has the one great season. Um, he also had a pretty solid combine. He actually, I think, on the relative athletic score spectrum, scored a little bit better than George Karloftis. Uh, but George Karloftis offers everything to me. And kind of the last couple tidbits I've been reading about his background and everything sealed the deal for me. I think this is a guy who will end up being a long-term all-pro for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in the right now, uh, I think we see him come in and have a lot of success as somebody that stands out a little bit on the defensive line. I mentioned this before. Carl Lawson's a little bit more of a speed component. George Kaloftis offers more power, but he's still deceptively quick. He has a, a lot of uh, pass rush moves at his disposal, and he's a student of the game. I mean, we're talking about a player that graduated college early and then was able to also make a name for himself at Purdue. So George Karloftis is going to be the pick for me. So this leaves us finally going into round two, but let's just take a look at how some other things around one played out. Jermaine Johnson goes right after to the Commanders. Stingley does go to the Vikings. The Texans uh, pick up Jamison Williams. Trevor Penning goes a lot higher than expected. He goes to the Ravens. Uh, over Ika Megwanu, which is crazy, but he lands in Philly. Charles Cross goes to the Saints, so they don't uh, they don't end up going the quarterback route either. Chris Olav goes to the Chargers, who now has another insane wide receiving core. Matt Corral goes to the Seahawks to see if he can challenge um, Drew Locke over there. Daxon Hill goes to the Saints. McDuffie to the Steelers. Zion Johnson goes to the Patriots. Drake London lands in uh, Cheesehead Town with the Packers. Andrew Booth to the Cars. Devin Lloyd to the Boys. Kyrie Lam lands in Buffalo. N'Kobe Dean still comes off in round one to the Titans. Uh, Kenny Pickett to the Colts. Okay. Kenyon Green to the Packers. Traylon Burke still makes it uh, to the Bears. Lewis Seen does come off to the Chiefs. And then we have Sam Howe. Uh, with the Lions at 31 and the Bengals at 32 picking up Perion Winfrey. Okay, Devontae Wyatt comes off the board early. Christian Watson comes off the board right before our pick here. So things open up a little bit. We have our cornerback, our number one of the future, uh, maybe even potentially right now in Sauce. We have our edge of the right now slash future in uh, George Carl Loftus. <clears throat> we can now turn our attention to the offense uh, and maybe other parts of the defense like safety, like linebacker that we need. Now, an interesting scenario that has presented itself, which I was not expecting whatsoever. Tyler Linderbaum has been one of my favorites. I was never expecting him to still be here in the second round. And at this point, I think I need to run to the podium because he can be he, he can do a number of things if we still keep him. Uh, and we keep Connor McGovern, we allow him to develop a little bit, pack on some size, which is really the only knock anybody has about him. If we decide to, if we decide based on what we see in OTAs and stuff, he's ready to start. We cut Connor McGovern, we save quite a bit of money. It's a win win in any situation. So we're going to go Tyler Linderbaum, help out Zach Wilson a little bit. McCreary goes to the Giants, uh, Arnold Abikity goes to the Texans. We're back on the clock, and we have a lot of interesting options. So we have uh, running backs on the board, which I, I I would love to bring in a Kenneth Walker, uh, a Brees Hall, but I feel like it's just too early. We'll we'll find a lot of good. We'll find a lot of good players that can still provide a, a very meaningful impact to us in the third, fourth round, maybe. Um, we have, uh, I, I, I really like Tyler Smith, but I just don't want to go this early as kind of like that developmental tackle I was talking about for insurance. Uh, we have our pick of wide receivers where I think we don't want to wait till round three. This is where we really want to try to grab somebody. So for me, and let me see something here. So we have Jahan Dotson on the board. And then we have, Two players which I was really looking at uh, in terms of the targets that I would have went with. Um, and I think one of these two players is going to be the pick. That's going to be Alec Pierce out of Cincy or George Pickens from Georgia. I think the best situation for us to go for 
uh, and it's slightly edged out would be Alec Pierce over George Pickens, and here's why. They offer somewhat of the same thing. Alex Pierce, size, he has the speed. He's produced consistently and been available for Cincy, which is a big thing. We've also seen him stick with Desmond Ritter throughout the entirety of their career. Uh, so we know what he looks like. It's not like he's been in a bad situation, etc. He has number one wide receiver capabilities. He's been consistent. He's been the go-to receiver there, uh, while not being a focal point of the offense, but still producing. So, uh, And then he could be a red zone threat immediately while also being a deep threat. So he covers a lot of the things that people would say maybe grab a John Mechie the third for right now. Alec Pierce, I think undoubtedly is going to be the pick here for me. Now, the question for me is going to be, I still want to make sure we grab uh, a safety and it, I'm, I'm thinking in the third is where that's going to end up happening instead of the fourth. Um, I don't quite want to pull the trigger, but he, he definitely needs a weapon. I think Alec Pierce is somebody that has everything in his tool belt to develop into a number one. We're going to make him the pick. Not going to overthink it. Alec Pierce is going to be the guy. Let's see what else has happened. David Ojabo finally comes off. He goes to the Chiefs. I would have loved to grab him, but we already invested in Carl Loftus. If we wanted to double down on edge, we could do that later, although very unnecessary. Uh, Brisker goes to the Eagles. Kenneth Walker goes to the Falcons. Travis Jones to the Browns. George Pickens goes to the Ravens. Uh, Jalen Peter or Petrie uh, goes to the Vikings. Jahan Dotson goes to the Chiefs. Desmond Ritter to the Saints. So they still get potentially a, a starting quarterback for themselves. Troy Anderson goes to the Packers. I loved him as a linebacker. Uh, we definitely still need to improve that unit. Brees Hall will now be in our division as a Patriot. Trey McBride goes to the boys. Uh, Bills pick up Sean Ryan. David Bell goes to the Falcons. <clears throat> Jeremy Rucker to the Chiefs. Majai Sanders goes to the Eagles. I liked him as well. And we see Nick Cross goes to the Texans. Okay, so here's the thing. We only have one pick in the third round. So we could double down at wide receiver. We could take a look at finally trying to improve linebacker. There's still two really good players here um, in Quay Walker and Chad Muma. Um we can try to go wide receiver still where there's still John Mechie uh, that's on the board, which he should have kind of been within this realm anyways. I think second round's a bit of a stretch. Um, there's a sneaky good player I really love. And, ah, oh man, if I was doing trade down situations in a heartbeat, I would have found a way to get him on. Uh, that would have been Justin Ross. Prior to something crazy happening, I don't, I don't think we end up being able to grab him. So I think for us, it would make sense for us to go safety or go linebacker. And I think with safety, while we still have two prospects, um, it's kind of a toss up. Do we reach a little bit for a safety at this spot or do we get a value pick in one of the top linebackers? And then in this case, it's really who do we want to go with, Chad Muma or do we want to go with a Quay Walker? Now, they both will fit the mode of everything we've seen. They both have high uh, relative athletic scores. They both have performed within the offense. Quay Walker's a little bit more of the unknown um, in that he hasn't necessarily uh, been able to break out, per se, uh, on that Georgia defense. Uh, a little bit of what we're doing here is uh, projection for him. But I do like the range and everything there. Um, I think I would prefer to go Quay Walker over Chad Muma. Especially since I, it's just something about having the players as well that have come in from some kind of championship pedigree. Uh, we've seen a lot of that with like the free agency class for us. I'm going to make Quay Walker the pick here. And we're going to expect that we can develop him into something great. And I think I, oh man, I think I'd seen Kirby Joseph just come off the board. 
He did. All right, so let's take a look at what happened. John Mechie III goes to the Jags right after. Uh, Leo Chanel goes to the Seahawks. Chad Muma to the Falcons. Justin Ross to the Browns. I figured he wasn't going to make it. Uh... Nick Bonito to the Rams. Buffalo gets a tackle and Daniel Falili. Jerome Ford goes to the Chiefs. That is crazy. We got to make sure we grab us a really good running back still as well. Sky Moore, very good wide receiver. I would have loved to have at some point. Kirby Joseph goes to the boys. Okay. <clears throat> so they beat us to the punch. So fourth round, I think this is the popular time where we really start taking a look at what we want to do at the running back position. Now, we've addressed we've addressed cornerback, which was kind of a luxury pick. It just happened that that, in my opinion, was the best option for us to go at number four. We have our edge. Uh, we... We end up grabbing Tyler Lindenbaum for our future center. We get our number one wide receiver in Alec Pierce. We get a playmaking linebacker in Quay Walker. That leaves safety. Um, you can say uh, defensive tackle still. Um, you can still say we need another wide receiver running back. Um, and then, you know, in whatever order, basically developmental tackle, uh, maybe another linebacker, etc. So, we can go linebacker again because there's uh, there's still a name that I love here uh, in Channing Tindall. Um, I still love Darian Beavers too, but we might be able to get away with uh, waiting till the fifth round, maybe. Uh, defensive tackle will still be an underrated need, but that's definitely going to wait to one of the last few picks. Uh, at safety, we're going to be down to my last player in Brian Cook that we're, we're going to need to target. So that's definitely going to be uh, that's that's uh, it's definitely going to be maybe somebody we need to consider right now or at the next pick. So the question is going to be uh, there's still quite a few names here that I actually would love to see. There's three running backs. Um, that I'm interested in to grab in a fourth, like, emergency one that I think we'll still be able to find a role for immediately. Safety, we don't have that option, so I am going to go Brian Cook here. And we still essentially get our pick of a lot of great running backs. Okay, perfect. So, running back. Uh, Tyler Algier does come off the board, uh, and I feel like we've seen the Falcons pick up a running back already. But either way, Kyron William goes to the Giants after two names here. We have James Cook out of Georgia. We have Brian Robinson out of Bama. Um, I would want to say... James Cook is going to offer a little bit more of the, the kind of do-it-all ability. He might be somebody that can be a, uh, a three-down running back. Brian Robinson Jr. is just somebody that I think, uh, when you talk about like role players, sometimes that gets lost in the shuffle. I think he could potentially really come in and like dominate at what we would expect him to do, which would be short yardage situations, um, you know, fourth and twos when we're, we're doing our, our fourth downs. I think we're still very aggressive in that area. Uh, and then, of course, just when we need to change a pace. Maybe there's going to be game plans where it's better for us to go with a power style running game uh, rather than a little bit more of the finesse and the elusive that's, that Michael Carter is going to have while still giving him, you know, a significant amount of snaps. The thing I love most about Brian Robinson, there's questions, right? Uh, and I kind of brought this up with like uh, Quay Walker where, uh, or not Quay Walker, but uh, Jermaine Johnson where he wasn't really able to break out. It's kind of the same situation in, in Alabama. Brian Robinson had to wait, 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 wait behind people. He finally gets his opportunity. He balls out a little bit, but there's so much, so little wear and tear on the tires there. Um I think we're definitely going to roll with Brian Robinson Jr. here. We're going to sit him in. We're going to watch him go to work and bowl some people over. 
Uh, we're also going to need, you know, especially for some of those cold winter games, we're going to need a player uh, like him that can come in and beast out for us. So it is the fifth round. We have two final selections. And we have a variety of things we can do. At this point, we have almost cleared uh, pretty much all of the major needs that would be necessary. We could double dip a wide receiver at this point. Um, we still have players like Bo Melton. Uh, that would be like the, the big name drop. Um, Tyquan Thornton, who was a you know, crazy speed threat. Maybe we use him specifically for uh, you know go routes and things. Try to keep the defense honest. Uh, at tight end, we can still look to see who it is that we want to make uh, that developmental prospect for us. Uh, tackle, I think we might not end up really being able to grab anybody. Um, anybody significant? The only name really that's still on here that even rings a bell necessarily that could be interesting is Zach Tom. Um and I'm not really interested in, in like picking them up at this point. Uh, defense. We still need to get a defensive tackle. And Haskell Garrett would be an amazing addition here at this point. Um, we also still have, ironically, Darian Beavers, who would be a huge pickup for us here. Uh, Jojo Damon is interesting as well. So... I want to say maybe we go linebacker and tight end with these last two picks. Let's pick up. Check all the options here. I'm not too worried about the wide receiver position because I think with cuts we maybe find somebody else as well that we all could also you know take a look at bringing back like Keevan Cole um, just as kind of somewhat of a safety net. All right, so I'm going to get Darian Beavers here, linebacker, give us another option uh, for a player who can come in and potentially contribute right away. Again, championship pedigree. Um, I think just from the standpoint of the physicality that he's going to bring along with, you know, a little bit of speed. He's not necessarily the sideline to sideline linebacker that we're looking for, but you still need somebody that can get in there and kind of lay the boom on people. Um, and he'll be able to do that, you know, very early and often for us. So we take a look at him at tight end. It's going to be a reach a little bit either way, but there's two players that I would consider here. Uh, one is Cole Turner uh, out of Nevada. The other one would be Jalen Weidermeyer. Um, either way, they're both going to be immediate red zone threats just based off sheer size. And I want to double check something. I want to say Weidemeyer has been getting butchered uh, in his athletic testing, whereas Cole Turner has turned some heads a bit. And let's double check. I don't even think Cole Turner actually did a lot of... Uh, I don't think he did a lot of testing either, actually, to be honest. Okay, so we got enough. He's a 737. There wasn't really too much from Weidemeyer, but uh, it, it, yeah, he didn't do very well at all. So you would have to purely rely on game tape for him, which, you know, honestly looks really, really good. It's really going to be a matter of what they're comfortable with. Um,. I uh, I think Jalen Weidemeyer, even with all the bad testing, would be a player where you just see it on film. It looks like he's doing some really good things. Um, Twelve touchdowns in two seasons. It's not the you know it's not the Isaiah likely type levels, but uh, he has a little bit more production than I think Cole Turner's has. So. 
I think Jalen Weidemeyer would be the selection here. Defensive tackle. I still want one that can also be a need, though. That um, that could also be a need that we try to grab uh, in like undrafted free agency. So. I'm gonna say let's let's uh, let's take the gamble on it. We're gonna go Jalen Weidemeyer here towards the end, just to round out the rest of this draft class for us. And uh, you know we'll stash him. Maybe we can rehabilitate him a little bit because uh, I know players can get beat up based on uh, you know not doing so well at the combine, etc. Definitely would have been somebody I would have been more comfortable getting in like the sixth or the seventh round. But again, uh, it's a little bit of a toss up. So. Let's go ahead and recap things a little bit here. So we have Ahmad Gardner, George Karloftis, Tyler Linderbaum, Alec Pierce, Quay Walker, Brian Cook, Brian Robinson Jr., Darian Beavers, and then Jalen Weidemeyer. So we have significantly, I think, been able to upgrade both sides. Tyler Linderbaum has to be an upgrade over Conor McGovern. Alec Pierce gives us... The opportunity to still try to strike on a number one wide receiver. Uh, we get Brian Robinson Jr. in as another uh, hidden gem, I would say, at the running back position. Amad um, Gardner, undoubtedly a number one cornerback. Um, and then we get all of these little pieces in between. George Koloff is on the edge. We get some great linebackers in Quay Walker, um, Darian Beavers. We get Brian Cook at safety, so we also get a couple different Cincinnati players that can come in and automatically have a little bit of chemistry right together as well. So um, maybe they, you know, get together a little bit as well, along with some of the vets um, to pick up on the playbook a little bit quicker. And then we get Jalen Weidemeyer right at the end uh, at tight end just to kind of keep things going for us and, you know, maybe build a bit of a pipeline. So all in all, I'm really happy. I still wish I would have hit uh, and maybe just pulled the trigger in the third on Kirby Joseph, but the the value versus where he should have really been, which probably is the lower end of round three, just didn't really match up for us. But uh, Brian Cook is definitely, uh, as a fail-safe option, he's definitely great. He could potentially be one of the better starting safeties uh, right out of the gate, out of that trio. It's all going to depend, but... Uh, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. I'm going to drop this list in the comments as well for you. But uh, I'm very interested to see how you guys feel. I think the more uh, argumentative picks are definitely going to be the George Karloftis over like Jermaine Johnson. Um, and then maybe Alec Pierce over George Pickens. And uh, maybe like the John Mechie third pick, stuff like that. But let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Peace.